Welcome to the next video in the Patterns in Nature topic. Today we'll be looking at the following dot point. Process information from secondary sources to analyse electron micrographs of cells and identify the mitochondria, chloroplasts, Golgi body, lysosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, nucleus, nucleolus and cell membrane. So before we go on to actually have a look at some electron micrographs to start analysing them, we obviously need to know what electron micrographs are. So electron micrographs are black and white photographs or digital images that are taken through an electron microscope. So you'll recall that we talked about the fact that a light microscope can give us colour images where electron microscopes can only give us black and white ones. Electron microscopes can magnify objects by up to 2 million times and they can do this in two ways. So we can either have a transmission electron microscope whereby electrons are passed through a thin section of a specimen or a scanning electron microscope where we can create visualizations of the surface of a specimen. The electron micrographs we looked at, or we are about to look at, sorry, are produced using a transmission electron microscope. So looking at the first one, we have the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the site of respiration in all cells and it converts chemical energy in the form of glucose and oxygen into usable energy in the form of ATP. So two really important things that help us to identify the mitochondria is firstly the highly folded cristae. So all these little lines on the inside are actually the inner membrane that is highly folded. You recall when we looked at the structure and function, uh, that structure allows the mitochondria to carry out many, many different uh, chemical reactions all at the same time. And the other thing is the double membrane. So the outer membrane of the mitochondria is just like the cell membrane. It is um, a double layer. The next one is the chloroplast. So the chloroplast are the site of photosynthesis that are only found in plant cells. So their job is to convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen using the sun's energy and chlorophyll, which is found in the chloroplast. So two ways to really help to identify what the chloroplast looks like is firstly we have these starch granules. So these are darkened spots within the chloroplast. So when the glucose is no, uh, not needed automatically, it is converted into starch and stored in the plant for future use. And the other one is the grana, which are made up of stacks of thylakoids. So they look a little bit like stacks of really thin pancakes sitting on top of one another. The next organelle is the Golgi bodies. Uh, so these are the site of protein storage, modification and packaging. So once the proteins have been created in the ribosomes, they come to the Golgi body where they're able to be changed and depending on what the cell needs, then the Golgi body pushes them out in these little vesicles here. But the main part of the Golgi body, again, going back to pancakes, can you tell that I like my pancakes? Okay, so the Golgi body looks like a series of flattened pancakes. Next we have the lysosomes. So these are uh, circular shaped organelles that have a membrane around the outside and what they do is they contain a number of enzymes and basically what those enzymes are able to do is break down a whole heap of different types of biological polymers. So biological meaning obviously created by a living organism and polymer simply means a uh, molecule that's made up of repeating chains. So amino acids are monomers that make up proteins, which are polymers. Our DNA is a polymer. Uh, carbohydrates are polymers. So the lysosome's job is to break down those depending on the needs of the cell. So we can see that they are rather large, circular and dark shaped organelles which are very different in size and shape to the mitochondria that we can have a look at here. Next, we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So you will recall that the we have two different types of endoplasmic reticulum, the rough and the smooth. So the endoplasmic reticulum are just ribbon-like structures throughout the cell. Now, the difference between the rough and the smooth is the rough endoplasmic reticulum have these ribosomes. So they look like little spots that are found on the uh, the ribbon-like structures of the endoplasmic reticulum. And it's the ribosome's job to manufacture and secrete, uh, sorry, to, to manufacture membranes and secretory proteins. 
Next, we have the nucleus and the nucleolus. So we look at these two hand in hand because the nucleus is found within, sorry, the nucleolus is found within the nucleus. So as we know, the nucleus uh, is the control center of all cells. And within the nucleus, we find the genetic material such as our DNA. So the way to identify the nucleus in the electron micrograph, it is the largest organelle and it is almost a perfectly round structure. Now, the difference between the nucleus and the lysosomes is the nucleus obviously for starters is much bigger but the nucleus only has a very small dark spot in the middle which is the nucleolus so this is where the genetic information is condensed and when we have a look at uh, mitosis under the microscope we'll be focusing and having a look at what takes place in this nucleolus so just like our mitochondria our nucleus has a membrane around the outside and it's got small pores in that membrane to allow the movement of substances in and out of the nucleus itself. Lastly, we have the cell membrane. So that's the outermost membrane of the cell that keeps everything else enclosed inside it. It is a semi-permeable membrane, meaning that it allows some substances to move in and out while not allowing others. Okay, so we have a double layer membrane again. Okay. Uh, it is made up of two layers of this substance called phospholipids. So phospho meaning that it has a phosphate group and lipids meaning that it has a fatty acids attached to it as well. So the thickness of the cell membrane is about uh, five nanometers. So it's extremely thin. Obviously, it's microscopically thin. Okay. And when we have a look at the cell membrane structure, we will see that the way that these phospholipids are arranged allows for the cell membrane to continuously move in a fluid motion in order to keep the cell uh, moving around, to keep it safe and to keep everything enclosed within it. So within that we'll have the cytoplasm floating around and then all those other organelles that we've looked at in this video and previous video on organelles. And that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you.